This episode of Huchos is brought to you by Home Grow. Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, this, this is the Rock Wedge Hydroponic System. This is a rock wool media based wick wedge remixed rain gutter grow system self refilling hydroponic system. But first a little context. A few months ago, I created something called the Wick Wedge Hydroponic System, and I've been really impressed with how this system works. The Wick Wedge Hydroponic System is a 3D printable design that you thread a wick through from the bottom over the top and back down, which then fits into a rain gutter grow system, self refilling style of hydroponic system. Over this, we place a bag of cocoa, which is penetrated by the wick wedge system. Into this, we can then cut holes and plant into our system. The wick wedge automatically wicks up as the plants utilize the nutrient in the bags as they transpire the water into the atmosphere. The first crop that I planted was cucumbers and they did remarkably well. I did have some pollination issues, but most of the pollination issues were caused by a lack of proper maintenance of the plants. So my yield wasn't great, but the system performed exactly as it was meant to and I could have got a really nice harvest had I pollinated those flowers. So I decided to go again with tomatoes. This time I made sure that I pollinated the plants using a sonic toothbrush to pollinate them. And this has been the result. I have been overwhelmed with the resilience of this system to neglect. Um, I've had COVID recently, so I really have not been maintaining this system at all, but it has just proven to be so versatile and the plants haven't wanted for anything. There is a bit of pest damage on these plants because I have not been maintaining, I haven't been spraying, they've just been left to their own devices. I've got a white fly problem and there are a few caterpillars throughout. But as you can see here, the plants are producing just so much fruit and it is just all throughout this system and the results speak for themselves. They've been supplying me with endless quantities of fruit that I cannot eat all on my own. And that is essentially what you want from any garden. So to emulate this system in a system where we have more affordable growing media, I decided to implement the exact same idea with our culty lean slabs that we can get extremely cheap. We're gonna set up that system right after a word from the sponsor of today's video, Home Grow. Has your food done more traveling than you? Home Grow is Australia's fastest growing hydroponic retailer, aiming to promote the sustainable growing of produce in people's own homes. A major factor in indoor growing is the control of your grow environment. And Home Grow currently have an extensive range of grow tents, including brands like Mars Hydro, Spider Farmer, Homebox, AC Infinity, and many more. For anyone looking for sustainable gardening alternatives utilizing industry leading technology, HomeGrow provides a useful resource center, including a weekly newsletter which can be accessed by joining their mail subscription list. If any of this has piqued your interest, head to www.homegrow.com.au and use the code HUCHO to receive 5% off your shopping cart. So the setup here is exactly the same as every other rain gutter grow system that we've ever set up. It does depend obviously if you're using 3D printable parts or not, how you set this up. I am endeavoring to try and make these 3D printable parts available to people without printers. So check the description, I'm opening a store soon and you may be able to get these parts from there and as usual all of the stl files for these 3d prints are available on my patreon these are the end caps 
for the 50 by 100 millimeter square pipe, which is available in Australia. There's also end caps for the American vinyl pipes that you can find in the US. So have a look on the file in my Patreon and use whichever SDL file suits the type of gutter you have available in your country. The barbs fit a 13 millimeter hose. So just your standard garden hose, but here I'm actually using poly pipe, which, which I've found to work a lot nicer than your standard hose. And then we're gonna wick up our 3D prints. So I'm just using, I'm using Ulmeric wicking material, but you can just use cotton. Uh, I think it's about a six mil cotton that fits through the holes in these. And this is probably the most tedious part of the whole build. We're gonna go and lay those out along our pipe and the spacing will depend on the size of the rock wall that you're using. Here I've got some T pieces and BSB to 13 mil so that we can fit it onto our float valve. And we're just gonna set up our rain gutter grow system and plumb it into our existing hose, which leads back to my 1000 liter hydroponic reservoir. My hydroponic reservoir is a 1000 liter IBC, which automatically tops this system up whenever the plants start using up the nutrient within the system. The nutrient in my reservoir is 2.4 EC to 3 EC, and the pH is balanced between 5.5 and 6.5. The next step is to place out our rock wall grow slabs. To do this, we just place out our slabs where we've put our predetermined holes and placed out our rock wedges. It's actually really easy to do. They just push on and break the outer plastic and slot right into the rock wall. I let this sit for a while, but I do find that you need to pre-soak the rock wall to get that wicking action happening. It did wet from below, but it took uh, over 24 hours to do. So I do recommend that you pre-wet the rock wall by just cutting out those holes and soaking it through. Now I propagated these. These are African horned cucumbers. These were well and truly ready for this system. I let them go way too far, but that's okay. We got them in there in the end and I just cut out some holes in the rock wall, the same size as the propagation cubes that I already had them in. I then strung them up with tomato hooks and I used tomato clips to hold them on the hooks until such time as the tendrils held themselves up. I actually don't think you'd need these tomato clips because the tendrils will tend to hold themselves up. And I would actually recommend a trellis for these kind of vines just because they are so vigorous and you really have a hard time of controlling them in this manner that I've used here. I then added in vermiculite on top to protect those roots and left the plants to the time-lapse cameras.
and we have a look at that result. Now, I'm really glad that I've desensitized you guys to be underwhelmed because there is a ton wrong with this grow and it's been neglected. There is powdery mildew throughout. It has not been properly managed. It's even got to the point where the plants are just growing across the ceiling. And <laughs> I mean, I'm just letting them go to be honest. They seem to be happy up there. The system itself works perfectly though. And I'm really stoked that these plants have never ever shown want for water or nutrition. And I've only touched them once or twice, um, stringing them up because realistically they'll climb themselves. I think I've got about three tomato clips on each plant and they did the rest. And that was only because they were already at size where they'd outgrown my propagation area. I'm extremely excited for this system because recently I picked up a heap of these culti lean slabs and unlike everything else, uh, these are actually getting cheaper. I think these were about $4.50 per slab. Um, so I bought 12 in a big pack like this. At $4.50 a slab, it's way cheaper than the Wick Wedge cocoa bags, which were costing me about 11 or $12 a bag. There is one caveat to these. I don't think that they will be reusable. Whereas the cocoa I have planted multiple times. So the first grow I had cucumbers actually. Uh, these are African horned cucumbers, but the original grow over there was Lebanese cucumbers. And then I replanted tomatoes into exactly the same bag. So realistically, you can halve the 11 or $12 that you spend for the cocoa bag. So it doesn't end up that much cheaper, but these are available and the cocoa is not. I cannot get my hands on any more cocoa. I do have a heap of bags, but I don't feel like there's any value in teaching you or creating systems that you cannot implement because the media is unattainable. So I'm trying to utilize the resources available in a budget friendly way and the resource isn't there. Frankly, the only problem that I have with these is that they're not exactly environmentally friendly, but I think that we can utilize this rock wedge system with these. These are rehydratable cocoa bricks. These I got from EE Muir and Sons. They were actually trialing them. I'm not sure if they're actually going to bring them into their product line, but they gave them to me to test and we'll be testing these in a future video, but they do exist elsewhere and I know that a lot of strawberry growers, oop, I broke it in half. And I know that a lot of strawberry growers utilize these cocoa rehydratable grow slabs in their strawberry grows. Once this rehydrates, it will be compatible with our rock wedge hydroponic system. So as usual, all of the STL files for the 3D prints that you've seen are available on my Patreon. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and want to see more videos. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Who Chose.